A couple of weeks ago, we made a video on this channel lamenting the loss of wargaming conventions this year due to COVID. But we tried in that video to help highlight how clubs and wargamers around the world are still getting together this summer to do some wargaming from the safety of home. Well, as it turns out, over the last weekend in July, there was actually a wargaming convention, just not an in-person one. It was a virtual convention. For the first time ever, the Historical Miniature Gaming Society, HMGS, ran an entirely online convention, which they cleverly named Cyber Wars. So, how did Cyber Wars go? Was it a success? Was it well attended? Could it potentially serve as a model for future gaming conventions as we look into the year ahead? Well, let's turn this recap video over to friend of the show, Mark, down in Washington, D.C., for a full report. This is my awesome 6mm Battle of Gettysburg. And none of you have ever gotten to play on it because Historicon was cancelled. I was hoping to bring it as an event this year. So when HMTS announced that they were going to do an online virtual convention called Cyber Wars, I decided why not. Let me jump in with both feet and see what it's like. So I decided to run games, play a game, check out the virtual dealer hall, and listen in on one of those webinars. Once I found the event listing, I found signing up was easy. And I received almost immediately a ticket to the game that I signed up for. So I got to play in the Altar of Freedom, the Battle of Shiloh scenario. And I have the GM, Evan Bale here. Hey Evan, tell me why did you decide to run a game for Cyber Wars? I was really excited to run the game for Cyber Wars, Altar of Freedom specifically because um, I, had, I was a big, a big fan of Little Wars and Greg, who, who wrote the role set. And I had created already a lot of these assets for Tabletop Simulator to play with my friend who lives across the country from me. And when I saw that you know, the conventions had been canceled and that they were moving to an online format, I was really excited to show and to share what I had created already for uh, the online community with people who maybe didn't know that kind of, those kinds of things existed. So we'll say he fired right at like, how about here, Gray? Right before two inches. So our Battle of Shiloh was a, a victory, for, an ahistorical victory for the Confederates. I also ran a game, Death of the Scharnhorst, and I took the opportunity to speak with one of my players about what he thought of the experience. The Death Ride of the Scharnhorst is, I forget the exact year it happened, but the Scharnhorst is basically harassing a, co a British convoy. My light cruiser Belfast managed to get in there and a good volley from the Duke of York and the Jamaica really damaged her and uh, took down her hole a lot and got to finish her off at the very end. So it, it felt really rewarding. But, um, you know, with multiple people playing against one player, you kind of like, oh, I feel like I'm picking on this guy. But at the end of the, uh, the, end of the battle, you're like, I, I want to play it again, but I want to be the short horse and I want to see if I can dodge all of you guys. So before this, Matt, did you have a lot of experience with online gaming or is it just all face to face? I have done a lot of, I mean, I've played a few games, you know, via apps and stuff like that, but nothing more complicated than like Carcassonne or Catan just to pass the time while you're waiting in an airport or uh, some of the digital versions of games. And it wasn't until COVID that I actually downloaded Tabletop Simulator. I really got into Vassal um, trying to play those. And, but thanks to Tabletop Simulator, I can actually try some of the, these uh, miniature games that I don't have the miniatures for, or I would only get to really experience if it was a, an event run at a convention and I could jump into it because I only have so much, right? Um, and you can try, I can play American Civil War, or I can jump into the War of Independence even though I don't have miniatures for those. So how successful was Cyber Wars? I'm here with Dennis Jensen, the convention director, and Todd Presley, the convention operations director. So what do you guys think? Was it a success in your eyes? It was absolutely a success in my opinion. Uh, we started with a very small plan uh, and it rapidly expanded to include a lot more events than we had intended. Uh, we had a ton of people show up to the events. Uh, so many positive interactions uh, from, from volunteers and speakers and the community as a whole. It, overall, to me, it exceeded our expectations. How many people do you think you kind of reach? you have any kind of numbers? Like how do it compare to say, you know, like the people that come to Historicon? 
Yeah, that's that's a that's a great question. So the the, the first the first answer is it depends on what we measure. Um, so from our Facebook page, we know that we reached about uh, 4,400 uh, different people, um, which is that's that's a that's a pretty good statistic right there. Um, we know that from our different uh, Zoom sessions uh, that we had about 193 at our at our top number of sessions in, in this in the seminar. Um, we also had um, uh, yeah, uh, for gamers, we had about 50 to 60 percent coverage uh, for each of the games, and we had, you know, uh, about 20 games running. So uh, that was pretty good. Uh, so and and it, it's it's the ability to take those games and do it across a geography, distant geography. That was that was really the exciting piece. So how do you see Cyber Wars fitting in with the traditional face-to-face -face conventions? Do you think it's a replacement, or do you think it's a complement? It, it's a it's a supplement. It's definitely in no way, shape, or form a replacement for a face-to-face -face convention. You know, that's one of the reasons we we game together in the first place. This is adapting to the current reality of, of the world as it is now. Uh, when we are post-COVID, this is an opportunity for us to interact more uh, between events, not as a replacement to any any of our physical events. You know, uh, folks who didn't who who didn't uh, attend Cyber Wars, we had a great event. Um, it, it was it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of things that um, I, I I had very low expectations of what it was going to be myself, and I was helping to, to to put it together. We had some really good games. We had folks doing multiplayer games with six or more players in a, in a game. Um, we had seminars with uh, you know uh, forty people in a seminar. It was a lot of fun, and and I'm hoping that we can do that again um, and, and really build upon it. Uh, we found out a lot of things that worked and some things that didn't work um, and we're, we're going to continue to improve it and hopefully uh, bring you a really uh, first class event the next time. So if they had Cyber Wars again, uh -huh. would you participate? Yeah, 100%. And yeah. what do you think that's chief virtue was? <laughs> that COVID didn't win in yet another way. <laughs> that we got to still get together and still kind of carry on this hobby and have fun, and distract ourselves. And I think I think one of my favorite things on the day was we had a we had a younger person playing in our game. Yeah. And it was it's just so cool to me that that, that the hobby is still attracting young people. And I mean, not to make ourselves sound too self-important, but you know, this is something we're passing on to the next generation, and it would it would be sad to see something like this, you know, go by the wayside because of stuff like COVID. Personally, I really enjoyed Cyber Wars. I got to meet a lot of new people, try some new games, try some new technologies, and mainly get a new perspective on what war gaming can be and different ways we can approach the hobby. So I'd like to congratulate HMGS for taking this chance to just try this new event. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you around the gaming table soon. Take care. Thank you so much to Mark and all of his interview guests for bringing us this great recap of Cyber Wars. But before I let you go, the Great Wargaming Survey, run by WSS Magazine, is officially back. The survey happens once a year, every year, and we want you to go to WSS and help us break last year's record for the most responses ever.